Hello everyone, and welcome to part 7 of how to make a point and shoot game. So, we're pretty close to being done. We got our objects and we have an idea for how we want them to move. Like, we'll have some falling from the clouds, we'll have some jumping from end to end of the mountain, some peeking out from the grass and some peeking out from the tree, maybe even falling off of the tree into the grass or something. And now we'd like to build out how the level is going to work. We're going to do, so the way we're going to do this is we're going to create an empty game object and this is going to control which block comes out and which, what the block does. So we're going to name this our game manager. And just going to put it at the center of our area. We're going to create a new script. And we're going to call this our game. And this script will contain everything that happens in the game. It will decide which, when each block is going to move out and to a lesser extent what it's going to do because I do want some random, some randomness like I don't want the block to appear out of the same spot of the grass I do want it to be in different locations and we've already experimented with random movement when we created our first script to move the block around so now all we have to do is hide each block for each different level and use our game manager script in order to tell that block when it can come out. So let's get started by opening up our game script. Here we are. So I'm going to use create a comment and I want this to be part one. And for the first part, I want one block to that is hidden below the grass to just pop out and jump at a random height at a random position. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to name this part one underscore character one or maybe block one. And with this naming system I'll be able to tell which block is going to come out and when. Alright, now in our script, for part one, well actually, first I just want to delete all these dummy sprites I created. Yeah. So part one, we are going to do... So in our script, we're going to call forth different blocks that we want to move around during the scene. And first thing I want to do is move um, part one, block one. Um, and set it to a random position and then have it jump out of the grass just like that and then if the block has been destroyed actually whether or not the block has been destroyed it does something with another item and then just keeps going down the line so what I'm gonna need is some sort of timer to figure out how much time in game has passed and using that timer I could figure out when I want each game object to do something and behind the scenes I could hide different objects either all out of the scene view or something just so they can't interact with anything in the game so let's go into our script and we're gonna need a few variables Let's have our float timer just initialize to initialize it to zero, and for testing purposes, we want to print our timer. And here's what we want to do: we want to say timer equals timer plus time dot delta time. And here's what this is doing: we create our variable named timer, set it to zero. And then we're going to, every time this update function is called, we're going to increase time 
by how much time has passed, or our timer variable. And now we can keep track of how many seconds our game has run. And it's going to be pretty precise because we're using it in a float. And Oh wait, actually, I need this to be a static float that is called outside because if it's in my update function, it's going to be reset to zero every time, I believe. So I'm just going to go into Unity, see if it works. Okay, that's a problem. Oh, wait. Timer plus equals. Okay. So we're increasing timer by how much time has passed and whatever value it currently is. And, okay, that's still wrong. Oh, wait. Okay, so, timer equals timer plus time dot delta time. Yeah. So, this is the line of code we're going to use. It's not plus equals, it's just equals. So, now if I were to click play, you can see down here that it is counting by seconds. And it's pretty precise of so 1, 2, 3, about seven different decimal spaces, which gives us a lot of control for different in-game events. So now I'm going to take our block here and head into my script and start messing with it. So, once two seconds have passed, actually I should say greater than or equal to, because it's highly unlikely to be exactly two seconds. Actually, we should also um, say and less than like 2.5. This way we won't be constantly activating this and it'll just be for a very small amount of time where whatever we write in here gets activated. So in here I am going to get access the game object that is named p1 block1 and move its transform.position all the way over to let's see where do I want it I just want to warp it here to negative 1 uh, negative 7 0 negative 1 negative 7 zero. And I'm doing this just for debugging purposes, just to make sure that this is actually working. Okay. Oops, I forgot to say new vector 3. Okay, that should fix it. Good. So just to test if it worked, if I were to pause and click this, Oh wait, I might accidentally left it there. If I were to pause, yeah, it warped. So now I'm just going to add a rigid body 2D, set the gravity scale to zero, and to make it jump up, I am going to get the um, rigid body 2D component access the velocity aspect and set it equal to a new vector 2 and since I want it to jump straight up I'm just gonna go 0 comma 5 so now if I were to click play okay okay I seem to have ran out of time for this video so now we have an idea of how we're going to have our level work and we have a system in place that will get our level running. Now it's a matter of putting the pieces together and getting the actions to work how we want them to. And I'll cover that in the next episode. Thank you for watching, and if you have any comments or suggestions, please let me know. And I hope to see you in the next one. Goodbye.